Hello, I'm Enrico De Paoli, and this is the Mix Secrets TV. Um, I was given some really cool uh, drum tracks to mix, so I could uh, test drive the brand new PSP AudioWare um, Infinity Strip plugin, which happens to be this guy here. The Infinity Strip is a uh, rack style uh, module design kind of like a 500 series widely used uh, for many decades and the beauty of the infinity strip is that it combines different uh, types of eqs different types of compressors gates expanders preamps and uh, so many tools in one and the coolest thing is that you can hot swap modules as you listen, as you mix. So um, you really get the sense of uh, A-B uh, comparison to make good decisions as you go. So um, I'm going to play what we have. It, I, I did a little uh, rough mix before we start, but I'm just going to play it so you hear what we have. And then we'll go along listening to what the Infinity Strip can do to uh, each uh, drum track and to the overall sound of the drums. Let's go. Okay, so this is my room mic. My ambience mic, overhead mic. This is the uh, overhead uh, infinity strip. Okay, basically the infinity strip has a preamp section, a filter section, a gate section, a compressor section, an EQ section, a limiter section, a master output section, and two extra modules here, that uh, two extra slots, that allows us to um, insert whatever we want again. So we can actually combine two different types of EQs, two different types of compressors. And the cool thing is, on each module, let's say the preamp uh, module, you have a, uh, an array of, uh, of uh, models to choose from all the way from uh, Pure Gain, a 60s style preamp, 70s, 80s, and the ADC 90s, which resembles the uh, sampler, sampler sounds of the, uh, of the 90s with the 12-bit and the uh, ADC drive, analog to digital converter drive. And then we have the uh, basic filters or pro filters or even sidechain filters. So we can sidechain the filters to different modules, sidechainable filters. And then we have the gate module, which I'm not using here. We're going to get there when, you know, in a different drum uh, track that I'm using, a compressor that can go from VCA to FET to, where's the other one, to Opto. Then we have, again, three types of EQs, a channel EQ, a precursor, a precursor, <laughs> which is actually modeled after PSP's uh, precursor uh, plugin. Really cool, in fact. And the retro cue, which is modeled after real vintage EQs, in this case, is it's modeled after uh, the, the classic PSP vintage warmer EQ. Really cool. The limiter I'm not using here. Uh, the master control lets us widen and reposition the uh, stereo balance. A deesser, which is not uh, is it swappable? No, it's not swappable. And another blank module here, that uh, blank slot, that allows us to insert anything that we just saw. And from here, we have the uh, full menu of everything we have. We have a D-Hummer, 
uh, the limiters, uh, optal limiter, VCA limiter, the three EQs I mentioned, the compressor, the uh, expander gate and ducker, which is really cool, and the uh, five style of preamps, actually three preamps, a sampler style ADC and a pure gain, a clean gain uh, stage, if you don't want to add any color to your to the uh, input stage of the uh, of the rack. Okay, so let's go on with the mix and then I'm gonna be playing so you can hear what it, you know more of what it does. Okay. Here I can mute each module. which is not mute sound, but mute the processing of each module. I can also solo the processing of each module. So every other module starts to uh, not be active. We lost a lot of gain here because of the preamp. I'm adding, you know, a lot of gain on the preamp stage here. That's why we, when I solo the compressor, this uh, processing turned off. Now everything is back on. Okay, I have here the uh, room mic, and I chose a pre sixties for the uh, for the room mic. Let's and and the uh, I have I have the gain here. See how much energy analog energy it gives us. Now let's go to the. Uh, See, the pre-80 sounds totally different. Yeah. Oh, I love this, ADC 90s. The bass, the, uh, the uh, low free, the kick drum gets so solid, just like the uh, 90s uh, samplers. Now let's go back to only the gain, so you hear the same gain but without any coloring. I'm gonna go through them. This is fat. This is fat and it starts getting a little crispier. This is cleaner with more harmonics in the upper spectrum of the uh, frequencies. And the ADC is just a beast of its own. Okay, let's see what the compressor is doing here. I'm just compressing very subtly. So for this channel, I'd like to just leave, you know, use the opto subtly because it's the more natural sound for me. Let's see the inside of the kick. I'm using the pre 60s because it's the way it's fattening uh, the kick drum. I am filtering from 56 hertz down. Let me turn off the other. So I'm going to show you something cool here on the kick. Um, I'm going to swap this basic filters to pro filters. Let me sweep across. Let me boost. Here it is. Now if I click on the notch button, it's gone. Really, really cool. So I actually have the uh, low pass, high pass, and then I have this really cool middle section here to filter off or boost or tailor anything I want without wasting any of the EQ bands. 
Okay, I'm not gonna add any subs or any lows to this uh, to this kick here because we do have two other kick channels. We have the kick out, which sounds really good. And we have the uh, sub kick. Oh, this is nice. Oh, this is so, so round. So for the sub kick, I'm using the pre 70s. Uh, I'm not filtering anything. So I could actually remove this. Remove. And then I have the fat compressor, which is a little more energetic. And I have the channel EQ. Now, since we are at this, let me go over what we have on the EQ side, on the EQ section, we have the channel EQ, we have the precursor, and we have the retro Q. So to show you the different uh, behaviors of each of the EQ uh, modules, I'm borrowing a Waves um, Q Clone and Q Capture plugin so we can uh, see graphically the curve, the differences in curves each one of the three Q models uh, give us. Uh, starting with the uh, channel Q, with theoretically is the one that uh, PSP suggests for overall use. Um, Let's see how it works. When I'm boosting, see when I boost just a little, as I increase the boost, it basically keeps the same width at the, uh, at the baseline here. That means when I have little boosts, or little cuts, the uh, width is pretty wide, and as I increase the boost, the width stays the same, but the peak gets steeper. So this is called a variable proportional uh, Q, which gets narrower and peakier as we boost more or as we cut more. So when we are working so, uh, with subtle adjustments, it's a, it's a wider Q uh, um, equalizer. Okay, let's check how the precursor work. As I boost, it seems to be a little narrower. Let's uh, change to, yeah, this is a little wider. This is a little narrower. Can you see? Yeah, yeah a little wider, a little narrower. Okay, let's uh, keep going. It's about the same design. It's yeah, it's not as wide, but it keeps the same, basically the same width as you boost. Uh, the same baseline width, let's call it that way. So it gets peakier. The same way uh, with a proportional Q, pro proportional variable Q as you boost more. But the cool thing here is that when you cut, it's a lot narrower. Can you see? So let's make a cut here and let's go back to the uh, channel Q. See how much wider it is? So this precursor is pretty cool that when you're boosting, it's wider and more musical, more round. But when you're cutting, it's more uh, surgical to filter off specific uh, uh, problem frequencies. This is amazing. Note that we didn't touch the uh, the Q um, uh, knob here. Here it's a slider. 
but we didn't touch it. So it's just the way the EQ behaves. When you're cutting, it's a lot narrower, but when you're boosting, it's a lot wider with a proportional Q and it gets peakier as we boost more, the same way as the channel Q. Okay, now let's see the retro Q. As you boost little, it's narrower, a lot narrower. When you cut, oh, when you cut is wider. When you boost is narrower. So it's a little bit the opposite as the precursor. See? And when as you cut more and more, it gets the, the Q gets a lot proportional and a lot variable. You know, you get in the, the baseline doesn't change much. See the baseline is not changing at all, but it gets a lot deeper at the peaking uh, center frequency. But when you're boosting, it's just a lot more precise. So this is about the opposite as the precursor is. And the uh, channel Q is just the same behavior, boosting and cutting with a variable Q. All right, now that we know how these uh, beasts work, let's uh, go back to mixing. Oh, I like that low end. Let's see what's uh, what's going on with my sub here. This is really good sounding. Oh, it's good sounding and it has a harmonic drive. Let's see what uh, what the Infinity Strip is giving us here. So I'm using the Pre 70 for the sub, which is giving us this uh, this drive. I'm gonna dial off the uh, dial back the drive here to see if it goes away. Actually, I'm gonna uh, change to gain only. Yeah, less drive. Now go back to seventy. Yeah, this would help us hearing this low end in smaller systems, where you wouldn't be able to uh, reproduce such low end. But the harmonic, the upper harmonic con uh, content, is uh, the smaller speakers can reproduce. Let's give it more drive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is nice. This is nice. But I'm gonna leave it cleaner for now. Not too clean though. Yeah, the fat presser is doing its job here. Let me. Uh, Yeah, it's just keeping things, you know, rounder and the, the low frequency is always constant, the same level. And here with the uh, channel Q, I'm boosting 61 hertz, 7 dB, and I'm dialing off 8.3 dB of uh, 167 hertz just to get that, that mud off. Let me turn these off so you can hear. Yeah, too muddy. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, this the low end here sounds really cool. Let's listen in the mix. Now let me mute mute it so you hear it without the sub. kick in. I'm actually adding a little top end here. Let me dial back so you can hear without. Emphasize so you hear what frequency it is. Yeah. So you hear the beater hitting the skin. And 
I'm also removing some mud of the uh, of the kick in, which is this here. Let me turn the EQ off. Okay, no. Now we can swap the hue as we hear, just to see how you know if by any chance the other designs sound better. No, because this is getting too narrow here, and I wanted actually to cut more, like the other EQ is doing. Let's see this one. Oh, this is getting too uh, too much of the low, like the low mids. Actually, the uh, channel Q is best here. So I'm using the pre-60s here with some drive. All right, let's uh, let's turn on the gate because I hear some leakage here. Oh man, this is amazing! A little more release. Let me uh, turn off the gate. Turn the gate back on. This gate is really cool because aside from a release and a hold uh, function, it has a shape function, which helps me shaping the uh, release curve. So when it's to counterclockwise, it's just a faster uh, fall off. Of the of the sound, and when it's to the clockwise, as you turn clockwise, it's just a slower exponential release time. Yeah, a lot cleaner. I love it. Very natural gate. Now, another cool thing I did here, I'm also using the gate, just so you know, on the uh, toms. Here and here. Let me solo so you can hear the way it was without. Amazing. Really good. This is the uh, Tom track, high Tom track. And uh, I prepared something really cool here uh, so I could show to you. I prepared a channel with a parallel compression, which has a little EQing uh, modeling, not modeling, but EQing the way I wanted the parallel compression to uh, sound. It's going with auxiliary sends to uh, an auxiliary return track with Infinity Strip using the Fat Presser, which is a nervous uh, sounding compressor. And I also made a parallel EQ track, which has a little VCA compressor, which is just a, a faster compressor at uh, lower settings. Uh, and the precursor boosting a lot of 12k and 56 hertz so let me dial these off and let's start with the uh, parallel compression so you can hear how it sounds Now I'm going to add the parallel EQ, which is here. Really cool. Sounds like a Poltec, the way it's set. You know, a lot of low end, a lot of high end. Let me turn off the parallel compression. Turn off the parallel EQ. All right. 
I hope you enjoyed seeing and hearing how the uh, Infinity Strip sounds and uh, what it, you know, the amount of things it can do to uh, to your mixes with a variety of uh, compressors. Oh, by the way, so we have an Opto and we have a FET and we have a VCA. The FET has a unique sound of the 1176 or the FET presser the PSP has in its own uh, standalone plugin. The Opto is just a very musical vintage style compressor, which um, has a, a slow behavior when it's uh, compressing uh, just a couple of dBs and a faster behavior when it's uh, compressing more. The VCA is the opposite. It has a, a, a fast behavior when it's just compressing a couple of dBs and a slower behavior when it's compressing uh, uh, um, a, a bigger range. I'm Enrico De Pauli. This is the Mix Secrets TV. Hope to see you again soon. Everybody be healthy there and make great sounding mixes. Bye-bye.